Member, the time has expired. Call Rahui Kartani. Thank you, Mr Speaker. In my maiden speech on the 11th December 2008, I drew upon the wisdom of the late Dr Martin, Martin Luther King, who said, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I come to this budget thinking again of the injustice of poverty. This is not a concept that we heard in the budget speech from Mr English. He talked about making changes to working for families to better target assistance towards lower income families. He talked about channelling resources into key social programmes while ensuring they are well targeted and protect the most vulnerable. He also talked frequently about the need to take a responsible, longer-term approach, a prospect seriously threatened by rising debt which leaves the government vulnerable and less able to meet future shocks. Yet, nearly three weeks after those statements were made, today we heard the staggering news provided by the Treasury that suggests the government is borrowing about $100 million per week more than it needs to. As they pointed out, that amounts to $5 billion more than is necessary for this financial year. But while the government seems to have been quite relaxed about overborrowing at substantial amounts, it appears New Zealanders have been the ones that have taken the more conservative approach in regarding expenditure. In the survey released yesterday by Sorted New Zealand, it was found that 56% of New Zealanders are less willing to go into debt since the recession. In fact, out of a polling group of 700, only 4% of those surveyed we're willing to take on new debt. Mr Speaker, I wish to place this budget into the context of many of the constituents who call on us. According to Statistics New Zealand's Food Price Index, between September 2010 and April 2011, milk, cheese and eggs have increased by 2.5 per cent. Fresh milk has increased by 3.4 per cent, while petrol has risen by 17.1 per cent. On top of this, electricity prices rose by 72 per cent under Labor in nine years, that is 8 per cent a year, and they've then risen by 9.5 per cent in the two and a half years since National took office. This is some of the bread and butter issues that our families are coping with day in and day out. And for too many of our families, no matter how diligent they budget, no matter how much they have tightened their belt and tried to make the money last, unanticipated crisis events occur. A death in the family, a bad case of flu, school uniforms are lost, wallets are lost, and all the time prices rise and rise and the money go round speeds up. Mr Speaker, some of these events, these life shocks, can be tempered in most families because they may have the benefit of a bit of give and take in the budget. But for the 240,000 children who are children of parents who rely on income support, that flexibility simply isn't there. And so we come to the injustice of poverty. All of us know that a child growing up in poverty is three times more likely to be sick we know too that opportunities in employment and training and education are inevitably influenced by the income levels in the household. Mr Speaker, the Māori Party has always given priority to protecting the vulnerable, and by that we mean the elderly and the young, the disabled, the disadvantaged, those who have not, those who may live on the margins of our community. In one, of, and in one of the most fundamental transformations of our time, we have sought to restore whānau responsibility, to invest in collective and mutual obligations through the initiative of whānau order. We were therefore delighted that whānau order, through the 2011 budget, has been supported to grow and to build on the incredible momentum it has developed. But we were also vigilant in our call for a responsible budget which takes account of the sharp edges of, re of recession, but also invests in our mukapuna. Our call has been to eliminate poverty. 
We believe that poverty reflects worse on those who have but do not share than on the have-nots. And so at the end of last year, I wrote to every party in the House seeking their support to hold parliamentary cross-party talks on child poverty. I repeated that call in the very first speech I gave when the House resumed this year, and I highlighted seven simple solutions that could help us eliminate poverty. What we know is that addressing poverty will take a long-term approach. The first and most immediate response is to care for and support those who are living in poverty now. But we must also develop long-term measures which strengthen whānau and communities so they are not living in poverty. As a result of our advocacy, the main benefits and superannuation payments were increased by 2.02 per cent from 1 October 2010 to specifically take account for the rise in the rate of GST. In addition to that one-off increase, between April 2010 and April 2011, main benefit rates increased by 3.75 per cent. We did our best with the minimum wage. And there was an increase announced earlier this year, although not nearly as consequential as we argued for. We have developed a very successful Marakai programme. We have funded over 450 Marakai nationwide to support Fano to grow their own kai and to rebuild community connections in a time when money is tight. This is about community resilience. I have consistently raised the issue of removing GST off healthy food. There are 50 kai tokofano nationwide who work with all members of a whānau to support them to access proper support and to advocate for their needs and to ensure that as a whānau they are all moving forward together. We have invested into cadetships trade training and professional training, which resulted in over 1,800 training and employment outcomes, some 1,550 training placements and 252 jobs. Under our ETS negotiations, the Māori Party halved the petrol and power levy increase. Electricity would have increased by 10 per cent. We got that reduced to 5 per cent. Petrol and diesel prices would have increased by 7 cents per litre and we got it to 3.5 cents. That would have cost the average whānau about $165 more per year if the Māori Party did not intervene. Around 1,500 low-income Māori whānau have had their homes insulated as a result of the Māori Party negotiating a 100% subsidy for housing insulation with a community services card. Mr Speaker, I come back to these seven simple solutions to support child, whānau and families. There, our strategies are to set a deadline to eliminate child poverty by 2020, designate an official poverty line at 60 per cent of the median household disposable income after housing costs and set net income to prevent poverty increase the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour, raise core benefit levels, including superannuation and veterans' pensions, simplify working for families, including extending the in-work payment to all families, investigate the reintroduction of a universal child benefit, and establish a neighbourhood renewal fund, which may include incentives to encourage living more collectively, such as community gardens and after-school care. Mr Speaker, I come back to my call for a cross-party parliamentary approach to addressing poverty. I am really proud that tomorrow my colleague Materia Ture and I are holding the very first meeting of this auspicious forum. It will be a great day indeed when our shared ideas truly do make the difference to address the injustice of poverty and develop a better future for all. I call Claire Curran.